Hello, welcome to the sixth and final phase for our lightning course on the software asset lifecycle. Today, we're going to be covering the decommissioning of software phase. This covers steps of removing a software installation and then ensuring that there is no remaining compliance risk. Every item in the software catalog that has been packaged for deployment to the organization should also have a corresponding uninstallation package. This facilitates the maximum potential for automation in your tooling. So linking to that previous lifecycle phase of deploying and monitoring software, if you are running a metering report on software usage, if that indicates that a specific instance of software has not been actively used for that predetermined period of time, well, for example, this could trigger an automated job in your discovery tool or SCCM, for example, that would utilize that uninstallation package. So you could build in varying levels of automation um, from a full end to end automation and workflow to having a notification or a report sent to the software asset management team and they could send out manual notifications before submitting tickets for decommissioning of software. It's important to remember though that you should always double check those potentially deinstalled or decommissioned applications. Are there components that didn't get removed by the tool? Did any elements change in the registry? Were there third party or external components that got included or installed alongside that installation that you could have missed? So the best practice here is to run your discovery and inventory capability for those affected devices, perform your deinstallation, and then run that discovery and inventory check again, and that will ensure that you catch all traces of the application and make sure it's been truly removed from those machines. As we mentioned in that deployment and monitoring of software phase, the majority of software publishers focus on if there is a potential to use the software. In other words, if there's any discoverable trace of that application still found in the IT environment, chances are the publisher will require a license entitlement. When software is no longer being used, it should be reclaimed to build up a license inventory, thereby ensuring that the investment you've made in your organization gets maximized. Only software that's actively being used should remain installed and therefore consuming those license entitlements. There are a couple other scenarios where we would be deinstalling or decommissioning software. So first one, if the underlying hardware where you're running the, the software has reached end of its useful life or it's being sent for IT asset disposal. So instead of utilizing that discovery solution, the uninstall package, typically what happens here is that the hard drive is reimaged and wiped and then it gets shredded or degaussed with a magnet. It gets shocked with a magnet to ensure that it's unusable. The best practice here is to ensure that the software installation records associated with that hardware are removed. And usually this happens on the next discovery scan. The discovery solution will run, the hardware will no longer be in the environment and those installations will not show up in the ITAM repository. So in this way, you build up a repository of spare licenses. As we mentioned in the assigning and distributing of license phase, before these spare licenses do get reassigned to other end users, it is critical for the SAM team to have an expert level understanding of those terms and conditions involved with a specific license contract for those software publishers. Another scenario involves legacy or outdated software. The IT security department, architecture department, as well as some application owners should have a regular cadence meeting established with the software asset management team to update them on applications that have reached the end of their support life. This means that the software publisher is no longer offering security patches or fixes and will not take support calls to update and fix the software if there happen to be issues. So in these instances where your software is end of life or end of support, it's recommended that this software be removed from the environment and all of the end user devices. So it does not pose a security threat to the organization. Removing this software is not only to reharvest the licenses, but to you know, decommission it entirely. It will not be used in the organization. This concludes our lightning course on all six phases of the software asset lifecycle. 
I hope this has been informative and that you've learned a bit about each of the phases as well as uh, some recommended best practices and why they're important. Thank you very much for watching. And again, if you've got any specific questions about software asset lifecycle phases, how these would relate or apply in your organization, or if you're having lifecycle challenges, or if you've got larger questions on any ITAM topics, feel free to reach out and contact us at anglepoint.com.